In this picture is the design layout of a Zen 5.3 DV Cache CPU. It looks amazing. In this video, we'll break down and analyze the CCD design layout and compare everything to the previous generation, Zen 4. Keep watching because we have something for you at the end. Let's begin with an analysis of the chiplet layout. Under the heat spreader, we see the classic Ryzen chiplet layout. The large die in the center is the I.O. die, which handles input and output to and from the CPU. The second die at the bottom left is the CCD with eight Zen 5 CPU cores. Zen 4 and Zen 5 look very similar, although there are some striking differences. The CCD at the bottom right looks much more compact, whereas the I.O. die looks more wide and rectangular. This time, the Zen 5 CCD has a much higher transistor density. It has 118 million transistors per square millimeter. Much higher than Zen 4, which features 94.6 million transistors per square millimeter. But before we've continued, we've noticed that 99% of people who watch our videos are not subscribed. For all of those who are not subscribed, I can see you wherever you are. You've got 10 seconds to subscribe. Done? Okay, let's continue. Moving on, we're going to take a look at a die shot of the I.O. die. It's very dense and packed with different sections. The memory interface is located to the left. It supports dual-channel DDR5. It's made up of four clusters with 40 bits each, 32 bits for transfers from DDR5 RAM, and 8 bits for ECC functionality. In total, the I.O. die uses a 160-bit memory interface. Memory controllers are located beside the memory interface. At the bottom edge of the chip are some general I.O. SIRDs. In case you're confused, SIRDs are sections of I.O. used in integrated circuits that converts data between serial and parallel formats. SIRDs enable fast and efficient data transmission over shorter distances, which is important for high-speed communications like networking and chip-to-chip -chip connections. In these SIRDs, the small parts are USB 2 clusters. The bigger parts are clusters combining USB 3 and DisplayPort. At the bottom right edge, there are 28 PCIe 5.0 SIRDs. These connect the CPU to GPUs and M.2 SSDs. Just a side note, the I.O. die used in the CPU is the same as the one in Zen 4. Moving on, we're taking a look at TSVs. If you take a closer look at the chip, you might notice some minuscule gaps in the L3 cache block. These Zen 5 X3D CPUs use TSMC's System on Integrated Chips, or SOIC to 3D stack the cache chiplet on top of the CCD. SOIC makes use of hybrid wafer bonding, where two chips are directly stacked on top of each other, which improves density and connections. The CCD and chiplet both have TSV copper pads. The chips are placed on top of each other so that the pads align. The stack is then slowly heated to fuse the chips together. As a side note, the 3D chiplets on Zen 5X 3D CPUs are radically different this time. A Zen 4 3D V cache chiplet would cover roughly 50% of the CPU integer units in the CCD, which is very bad for heat dissipation. Next up, we're looking at the Zen 5 CCD. Each CPU core is divided into three major parts the FPU or floating point unit the integer unit, and the L2 cache. By the way, the L2 cache is only found in the CPU cores. Moving on, the L2 cache in each core is just one megabyte, and the cache area is divided into two 512 kilobyte parts, with the cache control and tags in between. Overall, it's impressive to see AMD go further in optimizing their Zen 5 X3D chips to achieve more power and efficiency. By the way, you'll see some links to Fritzchen's Fritz's Flickr and his other website. Make sure to check them out. So, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to turn on the notification bell and subscribe for more videos like this. To find out how chips are made through destruction, click the previous video. To learn about the RTX 5090's weird secrets, click the next video.